Hi guys, this is Alex from Mason Lifestyle. I hope you guys are doing well. I'm coming at you today with a soul along for McCall's 8149. And I'm going to be doing view B, which is pretty much your classic, um, your classic denim skirt. Let me show you the line drawings. Let's see if I can get a little closer. There's your line drawings for view B. Guys, this is a great pattern to have in your stash. It is your classic denim skirt. The pattern has you that you can make this in faux leather, faux suede. You can make it in twill. I've made it in corduroy. And today I'm also going to make it into a stretch denim. The pattern is not for a stretch woman, but I'm going for it. Stretch denim, it just means it's going to let me um, stretch and move easily a little bit more. My corduroy one is amazing, super comfortable, great pattern also to do if you are a little bit hesitant on making jeans and you do not want to deal with, um, with the odyssey of fitting jeans and how it can be, but you wanna perhaps practice top stitching, doing a zipper, attaching a waistband, coin pockets, and all that good stuff. All right, guys, let's get started. All right, guys, so today we are working on McCall's M8149. It is your traditional denim skirt, great pattern, Sterling McCall's. I've made it once already. Um, and I'm going to be doing view B, so let me tell you about the pieces you're going to need. You're going to need pattern piece number one, and this is the pocket, and you're gonna cut two. I've already done that. You're also going to need pattern piece number two. This is the front, and you're gonna cut two. You're also going to need pattern piece number five, and this is the back. Again, you are going to cut two. Also going to need pattern piece number three. This is the side front and you're gonna cut two. You're also going to need pattern piece number four and this is the yoke back and you're gonna cut two. You're also going to need pattern piece number seven and this is the right fly and you're gonna cut one. You're also going to need the left fly, and this is pattern piece number eight, and you're gonna cut one. You are also going to need the coin pocket, and you're gonna cut one. You also have your back pocket, and you're gonna cut two. You're also going to need your belt loop, Belt loop carriers, and this is pattern piece number 11. You're gonna cut one. And then last but not least, you're going to cut pattern piece number 12. And this is your waistband, and you're gonna cut two pieces, and you're going to interface one of those. All right, go ahead and cut your pieces, mark your notches, and interface your waistband, and let's get started. So first things first, the pattern wants you to grab piece number two, and these are your fronts, and they want you to go ahead and attach those, and you have a dot, a large dot on the pattern. That's where you're going to start and stop. So right there. I usually like to put two pins right at that point, just so I know that if I'm starting there or ending there, that's where, um, so I don't keep going. So go ahead and pin. Right? So go ahead and stitch 5 8 inch seam allowance. Don't forget the back stitch at the start and all the way to the end. And I would definitely say do a couple of stitches right on this area because this is where your zipper is going to go. So make sure that those, not, um, those stitches do not break. So go ahead and do that now. 
All right, so I went ahead and stitched the two front pieces. And now we are going to go ahead and put in our zipper. So what I want you to do is I want you, you have your right side and your left side. Obviously, when I'm putting this on, this will be my right, this will be my left. So on the right side, when you stitch these two together, you have a 5 8 inch seam allowance or one and a half centimeter. So the pattern wants you to turn this in three eighths of an inch, right? And that's what, one centimeter? So three eighths. So at three eighths, just turn it in. And it wants you to go ahead and baste. And I'll put, put this area down. Go ahead and baste your zipper in. And up here, you're going to leave 5 eighths of an inch, probably even a little more, because that's where your waistband is going to go. So again, grab your trusty old seam gauge. Have just a little more in there. And... And guys, I put some interfacing right under that area. Remember, I'm using a stretchy denim. So I want to make sure that when I um, when I put this zipper on that I am going to be okay, right? And over time, it doesn't stretch or doesn't bubble. So I went ahead and put some interfacing right there. But now I want you to go ahead and baste your zipper in. Again, this is your right side. This is your left side. I'm going to keep this side down and I'm going to go on the machine and show you how to do this. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and base my zipper in and I'm on the right side and I have my zipper pull all the way down. You want to get close to the zipper, but obviously these are, this is going to be a metal zipper with coils. So we just want to base this in. And I want you to stop at that dot where you stitched in the two front sides. Okay. So get that out of the way. All right. So we got that in. Now we are going to do next. So I went ahead and basted my zipper in. So go ahead and put this off to the side for now. And I want you to grab piece number seven. This is your right side, your right flying piece number seven. And I want you down here, you have a notch over here, but I want you down here, I want you to stitch three eighths of an inch. And that is on your pattern piece. Again, three eighths of an inch down here. Once you do that, I want you to turn it. Go ahead and do that now. So I grabbed my piece number seven. I stitched it at the bottom. I turned it. I also finished this raw edge that's open and I gave it a good press. Now, I want you to get your piece again. And you have this piece with this raw edge. I want you to see that edge of your zipper. So now we're going to pin that right there. And you can do this from the back if you wanted to but I'm going to see if I can also go ahead and top stitch my, um, that area right there. Okay. 
So you can also pin back here if it's easier, right? And then pin in the front. At least use that pin just so it doesn't go anywhere. Okay. So again, now I want you to stitch right where you had that other stitching line, right there. Go ahead and do that now. And this is for piece number seven. And remember, we're working on the right side. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so again, I'm gonna attach my piece number seven and I got that zipper pull out of the way. Zipper pull out of the way. So we got that in. So now we got that in. I want you to grab piece number eight. And you have a notch right there. I want you to match the notch on piece eight. And I want you to pin. Again, right sides together. And guys, I also interfaced this. <clears throat> I also went ahead and interfaced this piece just because, again, I am going to be, right? Sip up, sip down, sip up, sip down. I want to make sure that that is not stretching on me. And I want you to stitch five eighths of an inch and I want you to stop at that dot. Go ahead and do that now. Now that we attached our left um, fly to our left side, I want you to go ahead and trim all the way to right there. Right. What I really want to do is just cut in some of the bulk. And I want you to also understitch. I want you to understitch again your seam allowance, even that itty bitty that we have this side on this side on your left fly. Right? So go ahead and do that now. Again, make sure that when you do that, you have it like this on your machine and you're stitching right here. We have all that zipper on the other side. We do not want to catch any of that. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so remember how I told you I am under stitching. And what I really want is that little nubby that I had that I cut in that I put it to that side. So when I press my left fly, it all goes inside. So 
you know, give this a really good press because we want to press it towards the inside. Go ahead and do that now. All right, guys. So we went ahead and attached that um, piece number eight. Now, the pattern wants you to go ahead and stitch the other side. And the way they want you to do it is to pull this out of the way, right, my right side, and then to also pull this fabric out of the way. And they want you to, again, you have to get all of these things out of the way on your machine because you don't want to stitch any of that. You just want to stitch your zipper to your um, left fly. So go ahead and do that now. All right, guys. Again, I'm doing this the way the pattern's telling me to do. And I'm trying to get close to the coils, but not super close. All right, so our zipper is in, right? And it works. There it is. Let me show it to you guys from the back. Okay. There's the back, right? So looks pretty nice and clean. Now I want you to, and I have to say, that is perhaps, I wouldn't say the weirdest, but... <laughs> It's definitely an unusual way to put a zipper, but okay, it works, it's in, right? I would have probably done something different, but I'm trying to follow the pattern for you guys. So now, and this is a piece that I usually just draw from the pattern. This is um, pattern piece, I believe, number one or number two. Let me see. So pattern piece number two, you have this stitching line right now and it says left side. So I made a little template out of that. So if you ever are wondering where did she get that, that's where I got it. So go ahead and draw that, right? And I have my little chalk marker and just give yourself and now we're going to, essentially we're going to top stitch. Okay, so go on your machine and top stitch. And it's asking you to top stitch once and then a quarter of an inch from this line, go ahead and top stitch again. So go ahead and do that now. So I went ahead and did my top stitching and my machine was not very happy, but we got through it. All right, and let me show you the back. So guys, we have denim, right? And we wanna make sure that we encase these seams. So what I usually like to do is, um, thinking that we do some flat fill seams. So the way you're going to do this, I usually just like to trim down one side and then um, pretty much fold, right? So I'm trying to figure out which way I want them because I usually tend to um, top stitch these, but I can always go on this side and I may do that, but um, your machine or the pattern has you going down this way, so, but I don't wanna do that. Okay, hold on. So what I'm going to do, and usually I just trim down one side of my seam allowance. Right? And then I, Take this 
to my um I take this to my iron and I fold the seam allowance and I press right so again just fold and press and I'm gonna go ahead and do that now so now that I went ahead and trimmed and iron this on or iron this in case I'm going to go ahead in the front and I'm going to top stitch and again I'm going to do just two lines two rows of top stitching in the front just so we can go ahead and encase those seams and we don't have to use a serger so go ahead and do that now all right so I went ahead and did one row of top stitching versus two um, and this is what it looks like in the back, right? So your seams are essentially encased. Now, again, I have a stretch woven. We're going to do pockets. So I put in some interfacing on the pockets. So I want you to grab piece number one. And these are your pockets. And I want you to do with right sides together. I want you to pin. And I want you to stitch 5 8 inch seam allowance or one and a half centimeters. Don't forget the back, just at the start and at the end. And do that for both pockets, the left and the right. Go ahead and do that now. So I went ahead and stitched in my pockets, right sides together. And now I want you to go ahead and trim the seam allowance. So just make sure that you don't go through those stitches because that can be a party ender. But now the pattern is asking you to go ahead and press your pocket towards the inside. Okay, press your pocket towards the inside and then two, two rows of stitches. I'm probably just going to do one, but again... Right, I went ahead and pressed my pocket. This is what it looks like on the um, on the left side, and um, I'm just gonna go ahead and do one row of um, stitches, of top stitching. But again, go ahead and do that now for both pockets. All right, so I went ahead and attached um, my pocket, and I top stitched it right. So now I'm going to put this off to the side and I have piece number nine and these are my pockets or my coin pocket. So I went ahead also and finished my raw edge and I also went ahead and put some interfacing at the top because guys, I am working with a stretch denim. So this is just a good way to make sure that does not stretch too much if I put my hand in my pocket and that it um, goes back to where it needs to be. So I do my pockets a little bit different just because I don't want to have as much bulk on my pockets and then also realizing that my machine is not it's a great machine it's just not Chira the you know super strong it's strong but not super strong so I have to make sure that I realize the limitations that I have so I want to make sure that you grab a piece number nine your coin pocket that you fold it a quarter of an inch and then that you stitch five eighths of an inch to the from where you fold it to the edge on both sides and then you give it a good press right while you are in the machine pressing away that you also fold all of this that you press all of this right then you press it away and before you do I would definitely cut this Right? Just so when you turn this over, it um grab your 
right? When you are pressing it so that it all stays um, in one spot. So go ahead and do that now for your coin pocket. That's piece number nine. Go ahead and do that now. So I went ahead and folded and pressed my pocket. And I also did two rows of top stitching. So now you are going to grab piece number three, and these are your pockets. And your pocket pattern piece has um, dots where to place these. But guys, I usually just like to just pull out my skirt and right, just do a little bit of putting my pockets where they go and then kind of eyeballing the placement of the coin pocket. Right, so I usually perhaps would want to put it right there and I do know that I have to, um, I have to adjust my sides. I cut this a little bit um, wider just so I can kind of taper and things in, but now that I have that quick pocket where I like it, all I have to do is go ahead and pull this out of the way, pin it in place, right? And go ahead and um, do two rows of top stitching. So edge stitch, then turn. And I usually just like to count two stitches and then just keep going down and finishing almost right there so go ahead and do that now go ahead and stitch your coin pocket to your pocket so again piece number nine to piece number three so go ahead and do that now so now that i went ahead and attached my coin pocket to my pocket facing now i want you to now you have to go ahead and enclose these. So just go ahead and pin. And again, I'm only attaching the pocket and the pocket facing, nothing else. So when I'm at the machine, same thing. So now go ahead and attach your pocket to your pocket facing with 5 8 inch seam allowance. Don't forget the back stitch at the start and at the end. Once you do that, I want you to go ahead and baste. Baste at the top, baste at the side because we're going to keep working with this and we don't want it to be shifting on us. So again, go ahead and attached your pocket to your pocket facing, nothing else. So make sure that when you're in the sewing machine, you're not stitching this whole thing. Just your pocket to your pocket facing, right? Also, make sure that you finish your raw edge. If you don't have a serger, just use an overcast stitch on your sewing machine. If you have a serger, just go ahead and serge that. Once you do that, go ahead and baste at the top and on the sides. Go ahead and do that now. So I went ahead and attached my pocket to my pocket facings, right? And I also went ahead and surged that, okay? And I basted the sides at the top and on the sides on both sides. So now I'm gonna put this off to the side and I'm gonna grab piece number 10 and these are my back pockets. And guys, usually I like to make a pocket template. If there's two or more pockets they need to match, I tend to do a pocket template because if I try to just wing it and do stitches and all of that, it never matches. So I always try to make myself a pocket template when I got two pockets. Um, and I'm going to go about this a little bit different. So I do a pocket template and I keep the fold line right but i definitely take away the seam allowance where i have to press this so essentially i just take this to my ironing station and i grab my pockets 
right? And I start at the top and I fold, right? And I press, give it a good press, and then I keep pressing this all in. Once I do that for both of my pockets, the, machine, the pattern yet again wants you to do top stitching. So go ahead and do that now. And this is piece number 10. These are your back pockets. Go ahead and do that now. So I went ahead, pressed my pockets. They look pretty darn close. And the pocket template, it never fails me. And I just keep these pocket templates with the pattern. So if I ever go and do this again, it's always there waiting for me. Um, this is what it looks like from the back, right? So I'm going to go ahead now and do two rows of top stitching and go ahead and do that now. All right, so I went ahead and did my back pockets and top stitch those and I'm going to put those off to the side and I'm going to grab piece number five and this is my back piece and then I have my yoke. And guys, I have two notches right there and two notches right there. So just go ahead and pin. So now I want you to stitch five eighths inch seam allowance or one and a half centimeters. Don't forget to back stitch at the start and all the way to the end. Once you do that, I want you to press your seam allowance towards the yoke. Go ahead and do that now for both left and right pieces. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so I went ahead and did my um, stitching of the yoke to piece number five, which is the back. And now grab your pocket. And you have dots on your pattern and just put those right there so go ahead and pin and go ahead and stitch just like we did with the coin pocket just i usually like to start right where that top stitching is at keep going all the way down all the way down and then pivot Count two stitches and then come all the way around again. Go ahead and do that now for both back pockets. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so I went ahead and stitched in my pockets and my machine and I kind of made up a little bit when it comes to top stitching, a little bit, not entirely. But now that you have these two back pieces, Right, and you have three notches right at the center, so go ahead in. Oh. Guys, and you also have a spot down here, and this is for your opening on your skirt. I am doing a stretch denim skirt. So I am, I'm actually going to stitch all the way down, but I'm going to leave an opening on one of the sides of the skirt. I usually do not love doing openings on, um, on the back of my skirts. Don't ask me why. Um, I tend to do them usually on the side. I think I'd rather show leg on the side than on the uh, back. And then something else, make sure that over here, oh, which that was kind of like the, the twist, make sure that these two seams right here, that they match, okay? Super duper important. Make sure that those seams back there match. So now go ahead and stitch five, eight inch seam allowance. Don't forget the back stitch at the start. And if you are doing the opening at the back, at the center back, go ahead and stop right there. I am going to be doing the opening on the side of my skirt, but go ahead and do that now. So I went ahead and stitched my center back. And again, if you have, if you want the opening on your skirt in the back, then you have to stop stitching there. Now, 
the pattern's asking you to go ahead and um, top stitch two lines in the center back, but I want to make sure that um, that when I try this on, right, you have to baste or um, do any adjustments back here um, that I can't. If I top stitch it, it's going to be a little bit harder to do. So what I recommend that you do is that you go ahead and you grab your front and with um, right sides together, you have two notches on the side, right, on both sides, that you go ahead and that you baste it in, right, baste in the sides and that you try your skirt on, okay? At least for fit around the hips, if you want it tighter, if you want it looser, now's your chance um, to do that. Go ahead and do that now. So again, if you wanna try your skirt on, now is your chance. I am actually going to do that. I've made this skirt once already, but guys, um, I'm using a stretch denim, so I wanna make sure it's not too loose on me and that, um, that it fits well. So go ahead and do that now. Go ahead and um, baste the sides of your skirt and try it on. Make sure if you need to do any adjustments to the center back that you do that. If you need to tighten it in around the hips that you do that before you do any top stitching on the center back. Go ahead and do that now. So I went ahead and Try it on my skirt. I did take it in quite a bit on the sides and in the back. Um, once you do that, I want you to go ahead and um, you can do flat fell seams like I did in the front, right? Or you can also go ahead and what I did for this one, I just um, cut one side of my seam allowance, just so I don't have a lot of bulk. I surged and then I top stitch. It doesn't matter which one you do, but guys, you have to top stitch. You're working with denim, which is a pretty thick fabric in itself, and you really wanna make sure that your, um, that your stitches are reinforced, right? This is gonna stretch and whatnot. I'm using a stretch denim it will stretch, but you want to make sure that your stitches are reinforced. That's why you have to do either flat fell seams or something, do something like what I did for this one where I just surge and then top stitch. So you reinforce um, those seams. So now, same thing for the sides, which I am going to do um, some flat fell seams but go ahead and do that now for your back and then for your side seams. And then this one here on the side where I have, um, where I told you that I usually do tend to do my openings on the side, you can go ahead and do again, you can do flat fill seams for this. Cut this right here. Usually what I like to do is cut right there and then do flat filled seams here, which is, again, and I'm going to do them on towards the back. So, okay, so go ahead and trim one side of your seam allowance. one side of your seam allowance, whichever I'm kind of going to do that towards the back. And then I want you to go ahead and press this off to the back and then yet again, press it. And on this side, I'm going to do the exact same thing. So go ahead and do that now. So I went ahead and surged the sides of my skirt and just went ahead and top stitched them with black thread. You can, you can I, again, do your flat fill seams on the sides if you want to. I'm not going to this time around. I just don't want to. 
but I wanted to show you what I do here on that side opening or if you do center back what I do in the center back. So I went ahead and folded my seam allowance into itself, right? And I usually like to grab some tool tape and of course in the back, I'm gonna put this one on this side. Again, then I kind of do a little triangle and then another little triangle and stitch. It just reinforces that opening, right? It just reinforces that opening and I don't have to worry about, about it as I, um, as I move and whatnot. And if I were to do this on the back, same thing. So I would just, and that's why I top stitch with black stitch because I'm going to do this, um, all around. If you were to just do your usual top stitch thread, then you keep going with your two lines of stitches. You do a bar tack on the outside and then you keep going down. But I just did one. Again, when I have an opening like I do here, I fold the seam allowance into itself. I press it and then I put some twill tape. I don't have black, which is what this fabric is, but I have dark blue and that's what I'm going to use. I'm just going to go ahead and stitch the side, follow, and then keep going, turn, and then go around. So if you don't have twill tape, right? Let's say you do not have twill tape, then you can just top stitch on the outside Right, so make sure that you're catching that seam allowance, and then on the outside, make sure that these two are closed, and you can do a bar tack on the outside, okay? Not the inside, on the outside. But I like to do twill tape here to give me a nice, just a really nice finish, and. You can always leave this a little long, right? And finish right there, but I'm going to be doing um, a hem. So I'm not quite so worried about that because that will get enclosed. But right. So again, there's your tool tape. So that's another way to finish your opening. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so I went ahead and finished my tool tape on the side. And guys, you can also do this after you do your hem. So don't think that you have to do this now. Um, you can do this afterwards. Once you do your hem, you can just finish it off with this. I just wanted to do it now because I don't know, what if I wanted to leave the hem raw or whatnot? But whatever you do, make sure that you top stitch. It doesn't have to be with your fancy top stitching thread. It can just be with um, your regular thread. You just wanna make sure that you top stitch and that you reinforce those seams. Now, put this off to the side and I want you to grab piece number 11. And these are your belt loop carriers. Then I want you to fold, fold, and then press, right? So go ahead and do that now on your pressing station. This is piece number 11, and these are your belt loop carriers. Go ahead and do that now. So you have your belt loop carrier, piece number 11, which we just pressed, right, on itself. So now the pattern wants you to go ahead and edge stitch and also top stitch. Once you do that, you are gonna cut those each one in three and a half inch length. So grab your seam gauge, measure, and then cut. 
If you don't have your seam gauge um, handy, I know the pattern piece also has a couple of spots, but just go ahead and measure with your seam gauge three and a half inches long and cut. Go ahead and do that now. Again, piece number 11, your belt loop carrier. Go ahead and edge stitch and top stitch and then cut them each in three and a half inch long pieces. You're gonna have four. Go ahead and do that now. So I went ahead and pressed my belt loop carriers and I edge stitch and top stitch them with black thread just because I don't use my belt loop carriers. I don't tear them to wear belts, but all right, let's put these in. So now I want you to grab right here, right where you have your, um, right where you have the start of your pocket and stitching, right? On this side, you have four. You can make more of these if you wanted to, but go ahead and put them in. And I want you to stitch quarter of an inch away from the seam allowance. And I would definitely do a couple of stitches back and forth. And again, do that in the back. I mean, you can have some fun with these, right? You could do something where you do a crisscross if you wanted to. But again, I do not use my butt loop carriers. So I don't, um, I don't tend to put more than needed. And I would definitely just put these um, centered with my pockets. Okay. Again, you can add more if you wanted to. I just choose to just do four. Four is good with me. So go ahead and do that now. Go ahead and stitch in all four of your belt loop carriers. Go ahead and do that. All right, so I went ahead and pinned in my um, loop carriers. And guys, I want you to grab your piece number um, 12. And this is your waistband. And you should have two of these. And I'm trying to figure out, right, trying to make sure that... Um, when I put this on that it's straight. So you can start center back, but I cut my waistband a little longer just to give myself some room. I just wanna make sure that I have five eighths on this side and go ahead and just pin. And you have notches and you can mark all of those. But I gave myself some extra waistband because usually I have to adjust my um, nice waistband due to my waist. So I started one in. So just go ahead and pin. And this is, you're pinning the waistband that is uninterfaced. All right, so now I want you to stitch 5 8 inch seam allowance. You're going to start right there, right? Right where that zipper starts. Not where the zipper starts, but let me see if I can show you. Right in this area. Your waistband has, your waistband has a dot, right? So I want you to start right there. Don't forget the back stitch at the start. Go all the way around. Again, 5 eighths of an inch or one and a half centimeter and then stop right there, okay? Go ahead and attach your waistband to your skirt. Go ahead and do that now. So now I attach my waistband and I went ahead and pressed my seam allowance up, okay? So now, that other waistband that you have that is interface, 
I want you to go ahead and do the same thing, but make sure that this piece at the bottom from the unnotched edge that you press it up. So I wanna make sure that you press the bottom of the waistband, three eighths of an inch, um, and do that all the way around. Once you do that, I want you to go ahead and pin. And guys, the pattern wants you to also put the belt loops at this time. I usually like to attach those at the end. And um, once I put my waistband on and kind of get an idea um, how much how much give do I have in there? I don't like them to be flush. I like them to have just a little give in case I do wear a belt and it's a little bit bigger than usual. So, but if not, you can follow the pattern and that would be to just pull your, um, your loop belt loop carrier up, right? And just stitch right there, but it's really up to you whatever is easiest for you okay just keep going all the way around and again as i had mentioned before I usually like to add a couple extra inches to my waistband. Just, that's the way it is, right? So usually I would have a little bit extra and I'll just cut that off, okay? So right there where I have that extra, I'm just gonna go ahead and just cut that extra and I have enough waistband, so if anything's stretched or I made my waist bigger, which usually is what I have to do, then, um, then I have enough room and I didn't waste, right? But at least I have a little extra. Now, I want you to stitch and I want you to start down here, get up here, pivot, and then keep going all the way around, all the way around. Again, get here, pivot, and then stop right there. Go ahead and do that. So I attach my waistband facing. And guys, I went ahead and just trimmed that seam allowance. And if you wanna trim this seam allowance down here, you can also do that, right? And point your corners, right? And one thing that I wanted to note, the pattern doesn't ask you to understitch your, um, your waistband facing, and that would be a grabbing that seam allowance and stitching it towards the face, okay? And obviously my waistband and my waistband facing, they are the same color. But let's say if you're doing this in denim and you have a pretty thick denim, right and you want to do this probably in maybe like a cotton right your waistband facing in a cotton you then you definitely need to understitch i'm not going to do it this time around but if you guys do this and again you do two different color for your waistband or your waistband facing then you definitely want to do that so your waistband facing stays inside and it doesn't tend to roll one thing i want to know when you are doing your waistband you wanna make sure that they meet right here in the center front and that they're the same height, okay? If they do not, just go back. Go back, stitch again, make sure that you are happy, right? That it looks good inside. Now that you got that done, we are going to fold our waistband in and we are going to pin. And what you really wanna do is you wanna pin in the front and what you're trying to do is catch your waistband facing in the back, okay? So go ahead and do that all the way around. Okay, all the way around, pin. And then 
I want you to stitch in the ditch, which means that you're going to stitch right on this line on the right side. You're gonna stitch all the way around, okay? And once you're doing that, you are catching your waistband facing. So again, pin all the way around. Make sure that when you're pinning, that you're catching that waistband facing in the inside, okay? So go ahead and do that now. So I went ahead and stitched in the ditch to attach my waistband facing. And guys, this is what it looks like, right? Let me get really close. See the stitching right there? And this is what it looks like from the outside, right? You see the stitching really close to that, um, that seam? That is stitch in the ditch. Now, the pattern wants you to go ahead and top stitch your waistband. So I would say perhaps start in the back, start in the middle. So top stitch all the way around on your waistband. Go ahead and do that now. So I got my top stitching done. Now we have to go ahead and fold your belt loop carriers and then stitch. And if you have a little bit extra, just cut that off. So I'll cut that in camera, but again, fold your belt loop carriers and top stitch or stitch, right? So go ahead and do that now for your belt loop carriers. You have four of them. Go ahead and do that. Now. Guys, I am stitching my belt loop carriers, but I put a Gina jig in the back just so I can go ahead and help my presser foot just get through the hump. So if you don't have one of those, I highly recommend it. Um, you can get it at, um, most fabric stores have it, but if you don't, just, you can also fold a little bit of extra fabric, denim fabric and put it towards the back and help your presser foot. So I went ahead and attached my belt loop carriers and you have this extra fabric. Just grab a pair of scissors and just cut that off, okay? Make sure you don't cut anything else, just that extra fabric. And now what you have to do is your buttonhole, remember buttonhole goes here, button goes here. And then last but not least, of course, which we always love, you have your hem. So I would definitely for this, what I would do is turn up my hem an inch and a half, just check to see where you want your hem to be, inch and a half, and then I would fold a quarter of an inch in. Once you do that, stitch. I would not top stitch this again, it is up to you, but my fabric is black, so I think top stitching will really, um, really look a little bit off. So I'm just going to top stitch with, um, with black, um, black stitching. But um, once you do that, you are all done. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that solo along. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please go ahead and leave them below. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe, and I will see you next time.